guys, so I am here to do a favourites video. It's been quite a while since I've done a favourites video, but over the past few months there has been some stuff that has stood out that I have read or seen or experienced or enjoyed that I would like to talk to you about and favourites are always like a great opportunity to do that. I can compile together a mishmash of random things that have kind of brought me joy even when I've not necessarily been in the best headspace and perhaps some of you will find joy in them as well. So without further ado, let's get into the favourites. So first up, a little bit differently, I want to mention two YouTube videos. They are videos on very different things from completely different, um, both booktubers actually, um, although one of them's not in any way related to literature. <laughs> But they're, they're videos that I just really enjoyed in the past few months and just would really like to push more of you to go and watch because I think you would get a lot from them as well. And the first one is a series of three videos by Rose Mannering called uh, Starving Girls in Victorian Literature. So this series of videos was inspired by her master's dissertation and she kind of introduces you to the topic that she explored in her master's dissertation which was the depiction of starving girls in Victorian literature and breaks it down for you and explores some of the stuff she explored in her dissertation in a really accessible way given that I hadn't read all the books she talked about and I am not a Victorian literature scholar at all. So it was super accessible but incredibly interesting. I had to like email it to my mum instantly thinking you'll love this, watch it, it's amazing. I just thought it was brilliant and I would love more of you to go and see it who haven't perhaps already seen it because I think you would get a lot from it as well. I found it a very inspiring thing for Rose to do as well, I, I loved it. And the other video I want to mention is D is for Dress Size, which is a video that Lauren over at Lauren and the Books made, where she basically went to a variety of different high street retailers and tried on clothes in the same size and showed how different they are. So, for example, I'm usually size 12 and I say I'm a size 12 and I'll go into Topshop and I'll fit into a size 12 perfectly but then I might go in another shop and get a 10 and go into H&M and need a 16 like because there isn't a lot of consistency and it's kind of about how we put a lot of pressure on ourselves with dress sizes um how how it's kind of a pile of nonsense and I just thought her video was so good Lauren's fashion sense is fantastic I also got some fashion recommendations from that video that I wanted to go and check out. I love Lauren's fashion sense and she's also just such a wonderful positive person and she puts forward such a positive uplifting message in this video that I would again highly recommend you all go watch it. But in terms of viewing there is one film that I have seen recently that I really really enjoyed and I do like to talk about entertainment a bit so I will mention that here although I do talk about it in a lot more detail in a separate video and that is The Breadwinner which is an animated film adapting the children's book The Breadwinner by Deborah Ellis and it's stunning it's such an emotional story it's about a young girl growing up in Taliban uh, ruled Afghanistan and about the hardships of her life but also her being a, a child at the same time and it's so beautifully illustrated it's done by the same people as The Secret of the Song of the Sea and The Secret of Kells, which if you've seen you'll know are stunning. So I went to see this, I had a press screening to go and see this and went to see it with Lauren actually in fact and we both really really enjoyed it. For me it did such justice to the book that I had loved as a child and I think Lauren really enjoyed it coming to it um, as a first time experience for the story and I actually had a chance to work with the people that make the film and did a video all about it so if you're interested in watching that and me talking more about dealing with serious topics in literature and film then I will link that for you but just genuinely heartfelt praise for this film and one that I would push everyone to go and see. My next three things for viewing though are all actually stage productions. I have had such a privileged few months in terms of seeing stage adaptations. I've seen three things that I want to mention to you that I adored um, so I'm going to mention them all briefly. The first one is Matilda the musical. My friend Jen actually took me to see this. It was the most thoughtful, kind gift ever and I loved it. Um, I've not been in a great place recently and Jen was doing something very very nice for me. I'm very lucky to have such thoughtful friends and it was not a disappointment at all. I'd heard such amazing things about it. A lot of them from Jen who'd been recommending it to me for a long time. I was meant to go and see it last year actually but then um, I had to give up my tickets because I wasn't in London and um, 
it was just wonderful. I am usually a little bit dubious about children actors and whether I'm going to find them a little bit insipid or not, but honestly the children actors in this musical were phenomenal, so talented. The stage set was brilliant, there was so much mechanism going on with the staging, like a lot of things raising up from the ground and then the songs were brilliant. I didn't know any of the songs, I'd never listened to the soundtrack or seen the musical before but I really enjoyed being introduced to them and overall it was just such a fun filled experience. I also saw my first ever opera recently, my mum took me to see an opera and that was Eugene Onegin which is a opera adapted from a Pushkin book with Tchaikovsky music so it was in Russian and I've never seen an opera before in my life it was something I wanted to try this year and see if I liked it and honestly I can see myself being a big opera fan after going to see this opera it was so amazing I loved it so much if you're not sure about opera um, they do actually have subtitles playing across the top of the stage so you can follow along what they're saying even if you don't understand the language they're singing in but even then you do get a sense of what's going on just from the acting and the singing and the body language um, and it was just brilliant I love this I really want to see more opera actually and I think this was a really great introduction to opera at one point there's a live horse just totted onto the stage and then totted off again um, f although I went to see it in the Festival Theatre in Edinburgh with my mum and we booked the cheapest tickets obviously which meant we were right at the top and we were right in the middle initially and you it was just so steep I had really bad vertigo and my mum had to keep looking away from the stage because she felt a bit queasy having being at such an incline and so high up you felt like you were going to fall over so then we moved to seats that were in the same price bracket but at the side and we felt fine for the second two thirds and um, that's just something I would suggest perhaps thinking about if you're ever at the Festival Theatre in Edinburgh. Cheap tickets, still great view but go for the side rather than the middle because it's a bit disconcerting. I also went to see with my flatmate, I got her tickets for her birthday to go and see the Northern Ballet's production of Jane Eyre in London and I loved this ballet so much. It's the first time I've seen a northern ballet production um, and I was thoroughly impressed. I would definitely see more by them in the future. But what I loved about this ballet was that I'd never really considered how all the ballets I'd seen before were quite traditional stories, they were often fairy tales and there's not that many plot points whereas with Jane Eyre this ballet had to transition through so many plot points and um, such a complex narrative and it did it seamlessly going from um, moment to moment and covering such a big story um, through dance and music and it was just beautiful. I was so so impressed. I loved it. But lastly in terms of entertainment related things I do have one book to show you. I've actually enjoyed quite a lot of books recently but I also just uploaded my best books of 20 18 so far or it's about to go up I think it's already gone up um, and obviously I talk about all of my favorite books of the year so far in that so I'm just going to mention one here because it is a standout one the one that I've most recently fallen in love with and that is Daughter of the Forest Now I think you're going to be sick of hearing me talk about this soon because I've mentioned it in quite a few videos and it's going to be in my wrap up as well so I'll be brief but this is a high fantasy novel set in medieval Ireland and inspired by the fairy tale of the six swan brothers. The prose are so rich and elegant, the plot and pacing is quite slow but detailed and engrossing and you feel completely caught up in the world. I could not put it down, I felt so emotionally attached to the characters and their story and felt quite strong distress in between reading it because I was like what's going to happen and I was getting quite fraught about it. I sat for four hours on my train back from Edinburgh to London reading this non-stop. I didn't do anything else for that train journey and that is rare for me especially with a tiny little mass market paperback like this. I was like I don't care. I don't care if my eyesight gets worse. It's so good. Um, I love this and I have become a firm fan of the author Juliette Marilli since reading this and another book by her and I plan on reading many more in the months to come because I love this and it is also part of my overall fantasy binge at the moment. I am loving reading fantasy at the moment and I can say for sure that fantasy is definitely a favourite as well. But next up I'm going to show you something that isn't a book but it looks like a book so that's why I'm going to show it next and that is 
The Great Penguin Book Chase by Tony Davis. This is actually a board game. Um, this was a gift from my friends Jill and Misha for my birthday, my 26th birthday in March. They didn't intend on getting me this but they actually went to a second hand charity shop um, the day after my birthday and they were both staying with me visiting from Edinburgh and they came back from the charity shop with this. They had both spotted it simultaneously on a shelf and gone to it because they just thought Jean <laughs> loved books and I love board games. So they bought this for me and I am so pleased. I had never heard of this before and obviously I don't know how widely available it is because they did buy it second hand but I will look for it online and try and link it if I can. And it's sort of like Trivial Pursuits. So I played it with Jen and Lauren recently and it's similar to Trivial Pursuit. It's not exactly the same but it's a similar concept and all the questions are related to books and literature and authors and so on and so forth. So if you are into literature and can get a hold of that, it's such a great quiz board game. I love board games and I just thought that that was stunning and not only that but it looks gorgeous on display because it's just like a giant penguin classic. But next up I'm going to give myself a little bit of a shout out <laughs> because one of my absolute favourites of the past few weeks has been wholeheartedly starting my podcast. So I did do a video about this where I announced that I started the podcast but in case you haven't seen that I had been planning on starting this podcast for ages. The idea came to me ages ago and I wanted to do it for ages but I said this year I set my mind to it fully and m made an effort to make it happen and I did make it happen. I saved up and bought this microphone which is the Blue Yeti. I had seen it recommended by a lot of people as well as my friend Sana who um, has also done some podcasting stuff so kind of knew what was good and it's a brilliant microphone. I would highly recommend it if you're saving up for a podcast microphone. I uh, signed up to a domain on SoundCloud, I did the design work with my mum for the logo and you know I put a lot of work into it and I created the podcast episodes and I'm just so pleased with how it's all turned out. So the podcast is called That's Ancient History and it is a podcast exploring antiquity, both its history and its place in today's world. So it covers a breadth of topics from like classics and antiquity and mythology in modern pop culture to um, actual ancient history topics, um, literature, film, archaeology. I mean, there's lots to come that hasn't happened already. When you're seeing this video, there is currently four full episodes available if you're interested in what they are. The first one is Getting Into Classics uh, with my friend from my undergrad, Harriet Scott. We talked about how we got into classics, both never having studied it before university. Um, then we have an interview I did with Madeline Miller, author of Circe and Song of Achilles, which are Greek myth retellings, which was such a privilege and a pleasure to do. She was such a wonderful, person to talk to. She was fascinating and I, I loved recording that episode. The third one is all about combat trauma in ancient Greece with a fellow PhD student of mine um, and friend Stan who is researching the subject and he told us all about his research which is just fascinating. And the fourth episode is just me talking about the myth of Procne and Philomela, sort of introducing you to the myth and um, kind of looking at how it changed over time and what it meant to the ancient people who told it. I can also tell you that the next episode that's going to be up, which isn't up already, is going to be all about myth and fantasy literature, funnily enough, with a friend of mine, Jill, who also did classics at university. But I have so many plans for the future with um, potentially other scholars and um, other students and um, other authors and things. So I'm, I'm really excited um, for the future of the podcast. I, oh, I feel like I could just sit here and talk about it for half an hour because I am loving making it and I'm loving your response to it. It has been so wonderful. Um, it's brought me so much joy. Um, the reviews, your tweets, everything. It's been so, so kind and supportive and I'm so glad that you're enjoying it and that it has worked out in a way I wanted it to work out, that you are finding it a good place to start learning about antiquity. So thank you so much for listening, those of you that have, and if you think you might be interested, please do go check it out. Um, I will link anything relevant down below. But two more things before I go. Um, the first one is, 
a sh online shop and a piece of stationery. Um, it is this little notebook and actually the matching bookmark. These were sent to me by a friend of mine, Holly. Um, she runs the YouTube channel Holly Dunn Design and she has just opened her online store selling things with her literature designs on them. So this is her Sherlock Holmes illustration. She designed this. She obviously sent me the best possible book I could possibly want. And it's a lovely lined notebook, which is perfect. It's so nicely laid out inside and just beautifully put together. It's got lovely little French flaps with more of Holly's design work on the inside. And um, she also sent me the matching bookmark, which was so kind of her. And Holly is just the nicest person, but also the most wonderful book cover illustrator. But obviously this is her like kind of stationery and other things range. There's tote bags and things like that as well. And I just wanted to give her a mention and let you know that her shop is up and running and that I would highly recommend checking out because the stuff is beautiful and um, totally, totally worth it. So those are my other favourite. And then lastly, my super random favourite, because you've got to have a super random favourite, is a blender. Yay! Um, this was my birthday present to myself. I think it was around £20, £18. It was under £20. I'd been fancying, I'd been thinking of getting a blender for a while because I wanted to make smoothies with frozen fruit because don't we all? So I had did a bit of research online, found this one and like I said it was not too expensive and what I like about this is that this is the blender bit and then it comes with this. So it comes with two of these which are actually the bottle and you just screw it in the bottle to this which has the blender part into it and then obviously put it inside the blender um, and then once you've taken this off, once you've blended, you can just put this on top which is a cap for the bottle. It's actually got two free bottles with it as well, I mean it's obviously a bit of a shame that they're plastic but hopefully I will never dispose of them and then it won't be so bad. Um, but it just works brilliantly and I feel like I've become a real blender addict and actually one of the things I've been using it for, more than even making smoothies, <laughs> that I didn't realise I'd be using it for but I'm so pleased that I can, is to make iced coffee. So if you're like me and you love a coffee and you love an iced coffee and you're from Scotland and now you live in London and it's like 10 degrees warmer than you're used to and you're constantly too hot <laughs> so you need your coffee to be iced then this just does a fantastic job of icing coffee. So I, the way I do it is I just make a cup of coffee which is like one scoop of coffee for me, some milk and some honey and that's how I take my coffee and then put it in I then leave it to stand, so I usually make the coffee before I like go in the shower or something and I leave it to stand so it cools down a bit and it's not too hot um, so it's usually kind of like room temperature and then when I come back I add like three ice cubes, um, chuck it in the blender, blend it and it's just perfect. Uh, maybe add another ice cube to the glass I put it in but it's just so tasty. It actually makes it all frothy and like I've got it from a proper barista. I, like, I'm so impressed. <laughs> but I'm impressed by simple things and I've just been loving doing that. Really, really enjoying having my iced coffees. They um, kick off my day in a really nice way. But those are all my favourites. I hope this video hasn't been too long and I hope you have found some interesting things in it. Do let me know what has brought you joy recently. Have you seen anything, read anything, um, bought anything that you've just really enjoyed recently? Oh, and what's your favourite YouTube video of late? I'd love to know. Please do leave it in the comments down below. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!